Steve Davis, 36. Looked as if it might have been a frame winning break, but uh, this is an excellent chance for Mike Hallett. Desperately needs to win this frame. a little bit careless on Mike it needed to be beyond the black to bring the cue ball down for the two reds it's very nearly a plant both players have had several looks at it 15. but now we'll discover whether it's on or not finished in no man's land after making the plant shot he's got to go right around the table off the blue and that's a very good shot just unlucky to finish so straight on the red But a good forcing shot has him on the blue. Now a good pot on the blue. It's automatic run to the yellow. Now he's in a strong position. 27. doesn't want to be playing anything too ambitious on the brown. Just make sure it goes in. 36. And now take as much care on the next shot and not leave Steve Davis a chance of an easy snooker. Mike Hallett, 36. Well deserved round of applause and uh, Mike Hallett in the driving seat. Winning position for Mike Hallett to claw one back, frame to Hallett. Remember, best of 17 frames, so Steve Davis needs two more for a place in the semi-finals. He's 7-4 ahead in the match and at the table leading 11-4 as we join frame 12. Amazing backspin there on the cue ball. Two. 
He makes breaks out of thin air. Davis, 34. There's a, a great snooker fan, Scottish international footballer, and uh, Manchester United star, Paddy Craven. Position on the black is not so good, but already 41 points behind before he potted that red. Mike has to take it on. And that's a good shot. for the black but a little too strong but it's a straight pink to the corner and he'll have the red to the middle after this if he puts the pink down We could see it wasn't there. It hit the cushion before it got to the pocket. 19 points in it. So a chance for Mike Hallett. 
25 points the difference. 35 points on the table. Problem ball, the brown. I think he's too straight, Eddie. Yes, and if he tries to force this too hard for the blue, he could have rattled that out as well, but it was a good clean pot. Now he wants a Mike Hallett special on this blue. This looks rather dangerous to me. Mike Hallett, 17. So he got within eight points. Can now only tie, but I doubt if he'll get back to the table. Consistency of Steve Davis puts another frame on the scoreboard. He leads 8-4 and requires just one more. So Davis on the brink of a quarter-final victory, but he didn't clinch it in the next frame. Hallett won that to stay in the match at 8-5. Frame 14, Hallett at the table, one point up. said he's expecting to knock those long pots in but he's missed so many in this match One. earlier in the match Mike uh, seemed to have cast aside the eight previous meetings he's had with Steve Davis he's only won one of them
satisfaire. Now we'll see the black coming into play. My word, these the way these reds are placed is every chance of a, of a very high break coming up here. Consistent, colossal. See what I mean? Fifty-seven. Only 59 points left now. has shown us some brilliant snooker. He's nothing to be ashamed of, but once again, he is in defeat at the hands of this world champion, this wizard of the cure. And from that position, Steve Davis completed the formality of his quarterfinal victory. In the other quarterfinal, Terry Griffiths beat Alain Robidou nine frames to two coverage continues 2.15 tomorrow on BBC One. One of the highlights for Steve Davis last year was being nominated by you, the viewers, the BBC Sports Personality of 1988. We're now little more than a fortnight away from the announcement of this year's winner. The votes are coming in once again for Steve Davis, but we decided to get his view on who the other contenders might be. David Vine asked Steve if he had sporting heroes of his own. Yes. I, yes, I do. I, I, but my heroes are not, it's not necessarily like a worship type of thing. I mean, I, I really, all my, my life watching sport, have admired um, professionalism, dedication to what you're doing, and, um, and that single-mindedness, which uh, to other people is unnatural, but to me is quite normal. Uh, and I've been very single-minded with what I've been doing. Uh, and I can associate with anybody uh, in that respect. So. All my heroes, really, uh, in the sporting world, have been individual sports. Um, I can associate much more with that, and for different reasons. I think, really, you look at um, the dedication of the boxers, uh, and I mean, you'd have to put Frank Bruno as, as a, everybody's hero. He got in the ring with Mike Tyson, and, and for a split second, just for a little while, he had him with a left hook, and he went, just for a second, and everybody went up, and then they went down a bit afterwards, but uh, that was a magical moment. Uh, Say individual sports, golf is one, and Nick Faldo's had a year. Yes, Nick Faldo. For me, Nick Faldo uh, would have to be my um, 
hero of this year um, for the simple reason that he looked at his game which happened two or three years ago I'm not too sure when it was now he looked at his game he decided that it wasn't strong enough to uh, compete he decided to take his game apart overhaul it and bring it back up to that level so Nick Faldo follows Sandy Lyle an Englishman follows a Scotsman and he is the champion for 1989. Probably the closest to your game. The analogies come through, don't they? Yes, that's probably why I can, I can uh, that to me, you know, I can see what, he, what, what he's done. Um, uh, there are other people who have done enormous feats in other sports, but I personally probably don't realise what that achievement, say to somebody like Peter Scudamore mm. in the racing world, um, and the, uh, the work he's done in, and, and winning all the different, uh, he's won everything. He's won it! Arden has won it from Athens Gate second. And so Peter Scudamore has done it. 1139, the all time record under jump rules. With, you say you associate with individual sports. Soccer's a team game, but I suppose the one man who stands out as an individual is the goalkeeper. I mean, this yes. kind of Peter Shilton. I'm just remarkable. Yeah, tremendous amount of pressure on a goalkeeper, obviously the strikers as well, but uh, the goalkeeper's got the, the final say in the matter as far as uh, the defence. Ashika, it's a good cross and a good save. He was the, I think he was the guy that knocked Gordon Banks, uh, or, or was very close to it. I mean, he's been, he's been around for I mean, that probably, if you had to say what is the mark of a, of a great, great champion, it's how long you've stayed in the top part of a game. And Peter Shilton's done that longer than anybody. The Steve Davis shortlist for BBC Sports Personality of the Year, but it's your choice that matters, and you'll find a voting form on page 16 of the current Radio Times. Fill it in with your selection and send it to Sports Personality of the Year, BBC Television Centre, London, W12 8QT. That's Sports Personality of the Year, BBC Television Centre, London, W12 8QT. Entries to reach us not later.